Since we have the ability to actually upload an image and save that image, it's now time to perform analysis on that image using machine learning. Now, the big question here is where do we put this machine learning analysis algorithm? Do we put it inside of Django or do we use a third party service? In our case, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be using a third party microservice API that we actually control. And I did it in a whole nother series. But the idea here is we actually grab that file, send it to that microservice. That microservice is gonna send us stuff back that's based off of that file. So data about the file, right? So this is actually very common for analysis on images or any sort of machine learning is to actually put it and wrap it into a microservice so that if that service goes down, it doesn't affect the rest of our project, right? In this case, it's our tri Django project. Now that's one reason. Another reason is because maybe you want to reuse this microservice on many, many other projects, or maybe you even want to sell access to this microservice so other developers can use it as well. Now that's how a lot of cloud providers end up making money, right? So a lot of cloud providers actually have a bunch of microservice APIs that you can call and you can do some data uh, anal data with, right? So you can analyze images, you can do all sorts of really cool stuff. So it's actually a good idea to not only know how to make a, micro, a microservice API, but also how to work with it. And that's what we'll do now. So the first thing is we actually need to deploy this fast API microservice specifically for Django to handle the OCR. OCR is just a term to extract text from any given image, including this image right here. So the actual machine learning algorithm has been designed by a whole other team that Google runs that allows us to actually extract text from an image in a really, really effective manner, which we'll see in a moment. But what you're gonna wanna do is jump into GitHub here and click on deploy to DigitalOcean. And what this is gonna do is allow you to deploy this microservice so it's under your control. Now you could always fork the application and then deploy it, or you can just do this one click deploy, and then you're gonna to wanna to change whatever this token is right here. Now, in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna open up Python and actually create the token. So I'll go ahead and do Python C. We're gonna import secrets and then do a semicolon and we're gonna print out secrets.token underscore URL safe and we'll do 32, hit enter and we get a missing parentheses there. We do it again and there we go. So here's this token that we wanna put in. We're gonna go ahead and encrypt it and then we'll hit next. And I'm actually gonna let you finish building this whole thing out, right? So I'm actually not gonna build it out because I already have it and it's right here. And I already have a token for it as well. So once you do have that token, make sure you go into your .emv. And what I wanna do here is say OCR and API token header. And this of course is our microservice and you wanna give whatever the token is you are gonna be using. So the actual API token itself. In my case is this, right? So after I actually push that one into the production, and along with those environment variables that we just set, right? So this environment variable right here, once we actually do all that, um, then it'll be into production and it'll look something like this and you'll have an actual API endpoint. So be sure to grab that API endpoint as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do OCR API endpoint also. Now this might be something you don't necessarily put in environment variables. I'm just doing it to make sure I keep track of these things in a simple and easy way manner. Okay, so I certainly need to make sure that my micro microservice is running. And if you see something like this, that means it's running. If it's not running, definitely check out the series itself and learn how to actually build this microservice from scratch with the fast API microservice for Django project on our website or on our YouTube channel. And of course, if you're good at GitHub and Python, you could probably read the code itself and actually build it. It's really not that hard. Um, okay. So now that we've got these things, let's go ahead and jump back into our view and think about how we want to approach this. Now I can actually run this function right here. I could run it just like this and then update my object and do all that. Or what I could do is I could use a, another third party package called Celery. So Celery along with a tool called Redis 
allows you to actually offload your tasks for another time. Now, I have a whole series covering this called Time and Tasks 2, where it shows you how to integrate Celery with Django. I'm not going to be covering it this one because, well, it's definitely outside the context of this series. This will just offload it to another time. Now, since we're using HTMX, though, we probably don't need to offload it unless we want to really speed up our user interaction. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it in just like this. And now inside of recipes, I'm going to make a new file called services.py. And what I want to do is I want to actually send uh, or extract my text. So extract text via OCR service. Okay. And in here, this is what I want to do. I want to actually, well, first of all, get the image. Then we're going to go ahead and send the image through HTTP post. And then we're going to go ahead and return um, a dictionary, some sort of JSON data. So how we're going to do this is by using a package called Python requests. So we have to install that. So let's go ahead and do that with pip install and requests. And naturally, we need to make sure that we have Python requests inside of our requirements.txt for when we go into production. And then back into our services now, to actually send data, we just run something like this, requests.post, the endpoint, and then files, whatever the file is itself. And in our request API, it actually has to be called file. In our Django project, the actual view itself, it's called image because of the field itself, right? So in the actual API that we're using, it absolutely has to be called file. Then we're gonna go ahead and set our file object or something like that here. And then we need to set headers and then we'll return r.json, okay? So how do we actually set all of these things up? Well, first off, import OS. And we already set these environment variables, so I'll just copy them real quick and paste them in here. So the first one is our token header, and this is going to be simply, you know, os.environ.get, and then os.environ.get the endpoint. So in this case, I'll go ahead and say if endpoint is none, return. Then if the token is none, also return. Okay, so that's just basically saying, hey, we don't necessarily have to have this working for the rest of it to work. Okay, so the actual endpoint now is gonna go in here. And then the token header, what we wanna do is say headers equals to a dictionary of headers. The authorization header is the header we need to use for this endpoint and it's gonna be a bearer token along with the actual token header. And then we add in this two headers, okay? So this function overall is ready to use. Of course, now we need to actually do the file object. What is the file object or at least what's the file object type? So if we import from django.core.files, we're gonna import the file class. This is really an optional thing that you can do. This is just adding in type hints for this file object. It's not really verifying this itself. Now this file object is exactly what inside of obj.image actually is. The obj.image is an image version of this, but obj.image is a file object, okay, at its root. So that means that we can actually pass this into this service. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that by importing it. So let's scroll up a bit and do from.services, import extract text via OCR service. And then we will call this extract text via OCR service. Okay, and then I want to return whatever the result is. So we'll go ahead and say result equals to that. Okay, so going back into the service itself, this file object. Now, when we use post requests, typically what you'll do is open up the file, right? So you'll open up the file, something like this. You'll say with open path to my file.jpg or PNG, whatever. 
And then we're gonna read the bytes and then we'll say as F and then we would do something more along these lines, right? Now, when we actually upload our file, this actual file object itself, getting the path is not always gonna render out where this file is. Because if we remember back in DigitalOcean, that's where it's stored, it's stored on one of these spaces. So how do we actually upload any file object from Django? How do we open that one up, whether or not it's uploaded in our local system or somewhere else? To do this, we actually get rid of this path here, leave RB, so read bytes, and then we actually call that file object dot open, and that's actually how you do it. It's really that simple, uh, which I think is really nice. So the next thing is, if this is none, we'll go ahead and set it equal to none by default. We will also say if file object is none, we'll just go ahead and return none. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and return an empty dictionary because I basically always wanna return something in this case. So no matter what it is, we're gonna return data, okay? And so that means then if R, that status code in range 200 to 299, then we can go ahead and say that data equals to r.json. Now, another thing we could probably check or verify because r.json means that this is JSON data, which we'll see in a second. But we can also say if r.headers.get content type, and this is going to be equals to application JSON, then we can actually return JSON as our data. So these are the response header. This, this R is for response. This one is for our request. Okay, simple enough overall. There's uh, several steps to get here, but overall simple enough. So now back into our view, let's actually print out what our result is. So we print out this result. Let's go ahead and go back into our project. So localhost 8000 into our image upload. Okay, so I anticipate some sort of error happening here. It's gonna be surprising if there's no errors. And I'm gonna to navigate to my desktop where I have these images with text in them. We can use any of those. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this image. Um, it looks like it's uploading, but it's hard, to, it's hard to tell if it's actually working. So let's go back up to Python. In this case, I get an actual endpoint failure. Okay, um, and so the .env is why. Right here, I actually don't have it as HTTP colon slash slash. So we definitely need to make sure that we're using the proper full URL endpoint, which is essentially what this is saying, invalid URL. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again. Uh, something important to note here is that's almost like as if the microservice was down, but that image would still have been uploaded, which you could obviously verify uh, and try out yourself. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and upload a new one. This time it's, it uploads, but we're still getting that same problem. So let's go ahead and actually restart the server because I actually did change uh, my environment variables and I should have restarted the server in the first place. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and upload an ingredients file. It's gonna take a moment for it to actually finish. Now, this is part of the problem of how our current JavaScript works, uh, but now it's done, right? So it actually did finish. And what do you know? Here are the actual results for it. Uh, this is actually pretty awesome that this is how simple it is to actually use a third-party API. So naturally what I need to do now is actually use this data here. In other words, I need to store it. So I'll go ahead and say extracted, not text this time, we'll do models.json field. And we'll go ahead and say blank equals to true and null equals to true. And the JSON field, what that's gonna do is it would actually store JSON data for us, which we'll see in a moment. But now that we've made some changes to our models, let's go ahead and run python manage.py, make migrations, and then python manage.py migrate. Okay, and then from that, back into our view, I'm gonna go ahead and say obj.extracted equals to result, obj.save. And now we'll go ahead and instead of printing out the result, we'll print out obj.extracted. Okay, so let's try this again. And I also wanna open up my admin here so we can actually see any given result. 
Okay, so we would be on object 14 if we uploaded a new one. Let's do that. This time I'm gonna just try this Docker image. Let's see here, Docker logo. And we refresh in here, we've got 14. And we get nothing from the results here. Okay, no big deal. Uh, if we look at the image itself, it actually is that Docker image. Okay, now what we're gonna do is use the ingredients, hit upload image, and come back in here and take a look. And this time I actually get results from this. Now, we're not gonna put these in action just yet. We, we definitely will, uh, but not quite yet. Now, the idea is why did this one work and the other one didn't? Now, um, this is why I actually want to store the images and get the extracted results so I can actually see what's going on with this data. Right? So this does send something back. It's really not usable. These are escape Python strings. But the thing is, the image itself does have some data in here. Uh, but this one is actually a transparent. It has transparency to it. So now what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of it, the exact same thing. Now, hopefully no longer transparent, or at least it shouldn't be, which I could verify on my desktop by opening this up. Here's my screenshot. Uh, it, it looks like it's still sort of transparent on my machine, um, but it's definitely not, right? So kind of hard to tell with those two, but there's definitely a color there, color difference between the transparency. Now let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now, this may or may not still, this still might not work, right? It still might not actually pull out the thing that I was looking for, but it definitely might. So let's go ahead and take a look. This should be 16 now. And yet again, it still fails. Okay, so this OCR algorithm isn't perfect at all, uh, but it will pull out some text in many places. So we can also try, let's try our hello world string here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and upload that one. So that one is just a simple screenshot. There we go. Upload that. Come back in here. Go to 17. Hello world. Okay, so again, another reason to start actually storing this data is to not only get the image itself, but also to get what the extracted images are so we can improve that microservice if it's even possible to improve. So with that Docker one, I wanna try it one more time. This time what I'm gonna do is open it up and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and add some more color around it. So perhaps this will actually help extract that image based off of what it currently looks like, okay? Or what this current, you know, microservice is. So we'll go ahead and copy that, hit upload image, takes a moment, and here we go. Still nothing. Okay, so it really just does not want to extract the image from this. So that, of course, is a long-term area of concern for this particular microservice, but all of it's free. The only thing that's not free is the actual services that are running, but even those are free because we have that trial credit. So the ways to improve this would be to extract this image and update the data down the line using Celery because then we can actually, you know, delay this from happening. Because if for some reason our microservice is getting a lot of requests, this might actually end up taking a while um, it's actually pretty fast as it is right now on my machine, uh, but it certainly could take quite a bit longer than that. Um, so that's implementing our fast API microservice um, along with our Django project here. And we now can extract text from there. So of course the actual results themselves have not been shown up. So we actually want to use those results inside of something else.